How about a garden tour? All right, so I thought it'd be a great time to walk around the garden and just show you what's happening. It has been a super busy month in my garden. Um, we actually are in the middle right now of a pair of photos. So just a quick note here, um, this is just me doing this one. Mr. Much More Patient has been really busy working in the garden as well, and he needs some time to do a few other things. So it's just gonna be, be me sort of casually walking around the garden. Obviously, we're looking here at the full front border, which is where this is where all the color is this time of year, you guys. Um, you can see uh, just a couple of plants. I'm not going to obviously point out everything, but in the front, you see the purple foliage. That's wild magic basil. That is a sterile variety of basil. Um, so you can't grow it from seed. Um, you have to buy it as plants. I always get it from Annie's annuals. Next to that, flanking it, you can see that I've got uh, this is a new sweet potato vine from Proven Winners this year. This is called uh, Sweet Caroline Medusa. I have it everywhere and it's doing, I love it. I love it. I will probably repeat that in the future. Um, the main dahlia that you're seeing here is this is Crichton Honey. You guys know this is one of my favorites. And I always love to show you sort of the difference you can have in color from really very yellow up to really quite salmon colored. And um, behind here we've got... Um, just quickly, we've got the tiny tough stuff hydrangeas right here. Now they're past their prime, but they still look pretty. Beyond that right here is, um, that's Kinsley's ghost honeysuckle. And I've just been kind of bending the branches around to create kind of a pleasing shape right there in the middle of the garden. Along the edge here, I'll just point out a couple of things. First of all, there's a lot of ageratum here this year. Most of that actually self seeded. Um, so if it'll keep self seeding like that, that's great because that's one less thing I have to grow every year. But I always love how that blue looks in there. This is um, Moonlight, Moonlight Night Lobularia. I have this in a lot of places around the garden this year too. And that Gomfrina, this cute little red ball you see was all supposed to be pink. That's, there's, a, there's a theme there. A lot of things aren't the colors they were supposed to be. Um, of course, you can see the limelight is really in its prime. You can see just now we're just starting to see just the lightest little tinge of pink um, but it's just looking just beautiful and we'll just take a moment here to take a look at the urn uh, which is looking great um, so the coffee cups colocasia in the top is just growing really well what a beautiful plant that is the best part about it is how these veins are um, this dark purple veining in them it's just beautiful on there. So, and of course, we're seeing the bottom of it um, because it's up so high in the air. Everything else is doing pretty well in that urn. Um, I did lose some white plants that were in there, so I was expecting a little bit more white flowers in the front, um, but I'm still okay with it. It just, you know, it doesn't take over uh, the garden here, which is nice since there's so much additional color going on here. Thought we'd work our way around the patio here. And uh, so, of course, this is uh, Nicotiana lime green. You guys know this is one of my favorite plants. Um, I will say not all of it has been great this year. Um, the best ones have been the ones that reseeded themselves. I might change my thinking a little bit on what variety of that I grow. Um, I think we'll come, we're going to do a full circle of this bed, and then we'll come back and take a look at the left side. So over here, just to show you quickly, this is Linda's baby. Dahlia, really similar to Crichton Honey, except much more corally pink peaches. Uh, this is Wizard of Oz. One of the things that I did this year along the path was add in some lambs here. Now over here on the left, right here, this is Salvia Argentia, which is one of my favorite annuals, or actually it's a biennial to grow. But um, I am trying to start working in gradually some more perennials so I don't have to do quite as much planting and so along the edges I planted quite a bit of um, the Helen von, von Stein statues in there. I also used a lot of gara in the garden this year. I just love this ethereal feel of it. I, I can't, I, that's one of my favorite things. So as we come around this way I will just show you we're on the back side here now on the path. And uh, I'll just show you in this area. So this is a new boxwood this year, right here. Sorry for the finger there. But underneath that, I just did kind of ground covers. So this is 
um, a carex called beetle mania, which is just like the best name for a plant. Next to that is European ginger. This is almost all this is what you saw earlier this year. I did a video where I got some plants from my sister-in-law. Those are mostly from her garden right there. That's where most of them went. So I just wanted something calm. Plus this area is not really sunny enough to grow a lot of annuals. So um, I just wanted to tuck in something kind of calm and interesting, especially around that boxwood. So as we make our way around this garden, this is always, I've had these hostas here for ages now, you guys. Uh, this is Blue Angel. I have never even divided these. They've been here for 11 years, I think. And then we'll just walk around the back side of this garden, which I don't show you very often, um, just so you can see the back side of the urn. And this is where I did some Scavola Whirlwind White right here. And there was one of those in the front that I lost. And you can get a little glimpse of the window box from here. And I tucked in some beacons and patience down here on the ground just to add some color in that nice little shady spot. Um, the grill is not usually there. We just had to take it off the deck for a photo shoot. So normally this area has right here, you see this is the Lictrum black stockings, but you can tell that the foliage doesn't always look great. And in fact, the foliage on this one is starting to really decline. So two of them, I cut down and they're starting to um, bulk up again and look nice fresh green foliage. But I did end up planting some more Nicotiana in here just to fill this area in so that there would be something in this area um, so that that was always looking good. So before I um, show you the front of the house, I just want to back up a little bit here and show you the two pagoda dogwoods in pots, which are looking really great. Um, couldn't be happier with how these are looking. It is definitely the last year that these are going to be okay in pots. This is year two. There's some roots coming to the surface, so I, I will move them out of here in fall and just buy new ones next year. But they have all these beautiful berries on them. They've got this great, this one has more berries than this one over here, but also looking great. Um, so that is something I will repeat in the future. Okay, ignore the, uh, the mess on the patio here. Here's the front garden. So this is not looking as good as it has in other years it's looking to, in my eye it's looking okay it's a bit jungly um it just is what it is this year and not every year is great usually i like to have more defined areas of planting and um, i put in some white onesta dahlias which you can see one right here and i was sort of counting on those to really really be the focal point along here that provides that repetition and they just have not done super well for me this year um, and it's been a very tough dahlia year so um, on the bottom layer down here i'll just show you this briefly one of the highlights here is this double deep salmon perfusion zinnia which i grew from seed and uh, now that it's going it's looking really really great beautiful um, very happy with that just keeps blooming um, really doing well um, of course, we've got more lime green Nicotiana in here. And you'll see this silver plant. This is Plectranthus silver shield throughout the garden. I've got it in all sorts of all sorts of containers this year and in the ground. This is, there's a few uh, dinner plate dahlias that are starting to look good here. Um, I think that might be Penn Hill, dark, uh, Penn Hill watermelon. This is Sierra Glow, which is real hard to show you um, a close up of here, but you get the idea. This right here is a new clematis that I'm growing. It's called Sea Breeze. Uh, I planted it this year. I did not anticipate uh, seeing it bloom this year. And here it is um, just looking gorgeous in there. And we have a new a fresh flower on the um, autumn sunset rose. And then as we come down here, we've got more dinner plate dahlias. Now I like, let me back up for you here. I like the window box to sort of meld into what's happening below it. I don't need any separation there. So that's sort of my preference that this all becomes one planting. And it certainly has, because you can see that we've got some dahlia flowers um, breakout over here and up here is Cafe Ole, just nestled right in there. Uh, and the window box I'm happy with, um, with the exception of, you can see on the left side, the sweep, this um, purple bell vine is not thriving. It's up there but it's about half the size as the purple bell vine on the right which is a bit of a disappointment but you know it's all right 
Um, and we planted this one up in a video too, which I'll link for you. Of course, that's more of that uh, Moonlight Night Lobularia, more of the Medusa. This is that Whirlwind Scaviola again, and that's an easy wave uh, petunia in there. Hey, so right here is the lotus that I planted up in a video this year. It's finally looking good. It's been kind of rough summer for it. It didn't do as well as the lotus in the vegetable garden, but you can see there is a big fat bud on it. So I'm really excited to see it bloom. And this seems like a great time to just remind you guys that if you want to catch updates of what's happening in the garden, because I know I show you a lot of things in spring and then there's a lot of questions about what happened, make sure you subscribe. You can do that right down below. Um, it's free. It just lets you know when I have videos and then you will actually get a notification if you click the little bell. So hit that subscribe button and uh, you'll keep up with everything that's happening here, good and bad. Before we leave this area, I thought I'd show you the wild and crazy container. So in the center, what you see mostly, this behemoth, is cup and saucer vine, which has not bloomed yet. Um, there are buds on it. I don't think it's gonna bloom in time for my next photo shoot, which is a shame. Um, and you know, this was wild and crazy when I planted it, and it still is wild and crazy. It's really, I have to water it a lot because I've got so many plants packed in there. Uh, I. I, will, I think it would look great if that cup and saucer vine would just hurry up and get blooming, but uh, this is not necessarily, you can see right here, maybe, if you look right here, see there's a little bud in there, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. Anyway, I think it will be very pretty at some point, but this is definitely not for gardeners who like a very neat and orderly container because there's nothing neat or orderly about that. As long as we're talking about containers, just a couple updates here. This is the Senecio skyscraper that we planted up. Um, boy, what a fabulous plant. And that's Corsican mint behind it. Uh, this is a pepper called Armageddon, and it is flowering in here. I've got some mint in there with it and a kumquat behind it. And um, over here, we've just got a nice little uh, combination of Spanish lavender and Kent Beauty oregano and a couple of figs. Little Miss Figgy Fig, which we also planted in a video, and then the Chicago Hardy Fig is the taller one there. So now we'll catch up with this side of the patio. Um, I actually had a lot of issues in here. A lot of the zinnias that I planted didn't do well. So I threw in some nasturtium seeds, and look, they filled in great. So um, nasturtiums to the rescue right here. Sorry for the shadow there. Um, this is the hardest plant in the garden to show you, but this is Verbena Bampton. Uh, it's an annual, but it's self-seeded here. And it has this great wiry texture with just the smallest little, little flowers um, on the ends here. And um, I, I love it. I, it's, I love where it has self-seeded. Um, I did not plant that one. I did have it on here last year, obviously. A couple of dahlias um, in here, that's Platinum Blonde. And this is um, mm, another one whose name I can't remember right now. So as we stroll down the path, much of this is very similar to what you've seen in the past. Veronica White Wands is doing its second bloom now. I had cut that back after its first bloom. That's a fabulous plant. And um, not a lot, like I said, not a lot new in those beds that you haven't seen before. Now we'll check in on this container. So you might remember when I planted this, I did three of just the salmon begonias. Unfortunately, I lost all but a small chunk of the middle one. So I had to substitute, I could not find a replacement. So I put in this Double Delight Primrose begonia. I don't like this container as much with the yellow in there, but it's still nice and it certainly draws your eye. And uh, I just love the combination of that Plectranthus with the Dichondra Silver Falls below it. I also picked up that Plectranthus in this area. So this is just alternating Gara and Silver Shield Plectranthus. Um, just, this is a nice area for us. We like to, I like to plant annuals in this area because it takes a real beating in winter. So perennials can have a tough time overwintering there. So if I plant annuals, and it's just six of them that I have to pop in there, um, you know, I don't have to worry about what happens to them in winter. 
So the nice thing with this Plectranthus is that it roots very easily. And in fact, these two Plectranthus that you see right here are just cuttings from just the container right over there. That um, is uh, climbing hydrangea, of course, growing along the walls of the garage there. And we'll just move our way along this border. Um, just, a, just one thing to try to get my shadow out of the way for you here. Just thought I'd show you this. This little planting is just Hacklencloa all gold and then two beacons and patience. And those are actually planted in the trunk of a tree that we cut down. Um, and they do really well there. And it just really draws your eye to this um, kind of dimmer part of the garden. So this is the other side of that part of the lawn. Um, this is a, an, an incredible hydrangea. And there's another one on the other side of the path over here. And behind that is limelight. The Incredibles have been quite floppy this year entirely i believe due to how dry it was for a period of time um i actually they are partly staked up um, because i needed to for photos i made this little corner kind of a little tropical corner um, so we've got lemon coral sedum in the bottom and we've got some deep rose uh, perfume nicotiana We've got Tropicana Canna. We've got some beautiful dahlias in here, including this purple one is Thomas Edison. I've got some pink perfusion zinnias in there. I'll tell you the story about those in a second. And then here we've got a little, a few cosmos, which I just stuck in there. This is the only place in my garden where the cosmos are doing well. The main difference is that this is hot, full sun, and the rest of the places are not quite full sun. So I will you'll see it in a little bit here what the other ones look like but I will never I will not plant cosmos in anything but the fullest of sun again just to show you another Nicotiana I'm planting this that I grew this year this is the purple version of the pink one over there this is um, purple perfume Nicotiana um, really pumping out the color on those I think I show you this little corner in almost every video but I always love the Aurelia silver umbrella that's here. And if you see the sort of frothy white bits, that is actually the flowers um, just starting to open. So very soon this thing will be absolutely humming with pollinators. So this is a combination that I always just really love in the garden. I always think it looks so pretty on this corner. And I love how that Aurelia kind of pops over the top of the railing at the deck. So I had to just put it on wide angle here so you could see the two containers um, where we've got the purple bell vine growing up towards the pergola now. Show you this whole container here. Um, everything looking pretty good here. Um, this Terenia, I think this is gilded grape. Um, better color in the sun. The one that gets less sun is generally growing better but not as good of color. And you can see here, this one comes up over the top and just kind of dangles down. Um, such a, such a pretty plant, this purple bell vine. And I just love how it just sort of drapes like garlands here. I just wanted to quickly show you the view from up on the deck where you can kind of overlook the top of these limelight hydrangeas here. Um, so you're right, they're right up in your face. You can look right into them, which I kind of love. And then over here is the Aurelia silver umbrella. And again, here's the flowers. And uh, I just love how it sort of drapes over the railing, but provides some interest up here on the deck as well as down below. So this is the north um, side of the house now. And this garden did get quite a few changes this year. Um, these hydrangeas I actually transplanted from a different area this year. They seem to be doing pretty well, as long as I make sure to keep up on the watering with them. And the phlox here are all um, transplants from another person's garden. And I sort of divided those and moved those around this year. And they're just, just blooming now, they're looking great. Just to give you an idea of how slowly our garden moves sometimes. This is the uh, a summerific 
hibiscus and you can see the very first flowers are just starting to think about coming out. So a lot of people had their hibiscus blooming three weeks ago. Mine will do it hopefully sometime this week. Behind here I have planted a lot of shade plants, sort of ground covery type things, epimediums, hackalocloa, all gold, um, a few other things in there to hopefully just take over this area underneath this tree and just provide um, a lot of textural interest underneath there. So as we come around to this side, you'll see um, this hydrangea that we planted up in a video. And again, I used, uh, I, oh my gosh, the mosquitoes are really bad. And again, I used the Corsican mint. I did redo this corner right here where you see this powwow pink echinacea. Uh, what well, powwow wildberry, excuse me. Um, this is where I had a whole bunch of poppies growing. I've taken out most of those and collected the seed. I left a few seed heads here for interest, but I needed to fill this in. So um, I got some amethyst falls, ornamental oregano, and some uh, Danielle phlox, the white phlox, and that powwow wildberry. Uh, echinacea to just kind of add a little interest there because this garden's a little lacking in color. Now I did plant some salvias, uh, millennium alliums, and some grasses along this edge here which just don't look like much this year but they will I think in the future. The tricolor beach is not very tricolor this year. My understanding is that it's quite common for newly planted tricolor beaches to not have great variegation for a few years after they've been in the ground. So hopefully it will come back and have good color because it's looking a lot like a copper beach these days. Over on the left is um, Annabelle hydrangea, which is quite floppy. And um, let's see if you can even see in there. We have, I have sort of strung up if you can see some of the strings in there, the black twine. I have sort of strung up some blooms. This garden this year is sort of half held together with twine and stakes. Just had to do it because it was just such a rough year um, as far as staking went because we just had no, uh, we just had no rain for a while. Here's the hot border looking hot. Rebecca, Hellenium, more pink profusion zinnias, a few other things in there. There's where I do my flower, my water arrangements. Um, very happy with how the Hackland Claw All Gold has filled in down there. I did that in a video two or maybe three years ago now. Um, and I love the look of that along the path. Now this area is uh, new. You guys might remember I was talking about changing this border and I did. And I actually started making a video about it. If I can find the footage, I'll try to drop it in. But I did end up trying to essentially match the angle of this or the shape of this edge with the circle garden over there on the left, um, which has led to this sort of new bump out, which is kind of coming into its own. Now I've planted as sort of the centerpiece here, uh, um, wolf eyes dogwood. I have wanted this plant for a long time. The conclusion that I've come to here, even though that's not really, it gets very horizontal tiered. So this is not a good indication of what it will look like at maturity. Um, what I've come to the conclusion here is that I don't like it in this spot and that what I think I'd really like to do is move that somewhere else and find a really beautiful container for this spot. Maybe one that I don't even plant with anything. Um, just to be a focal point container right there because there is a lot happening behind it, including back here we have a whole bunch of caladiums which I have planted in just an old fire pit that we had. It was a fire pot and I just drilled a whole bunch more holes in it and it really just draws your eye over here. I think it's beautiful and I just love this look. I do love popping a container in the middle of a garden and I think it works particularly well in this case. So we'll continue with that shade border in a second but I just want to sort of circle around here and show you this border. Now the stakes that you see are just temporarily holding up the Calamanth Montrose white um, so we can mow underneath it and then I will let them down. Uh, these are new plants this year from two inch plugs. So they're a little floppier than they normally are and they do overlap the grass a little bit. Um, behind that is just the tough stuff hydrangea. And then we have the Asian pear espalier there. 
I did redo this bed this year and pull out almost all the plants except and then added in this uh, calamanth, um, a sanguisorba right here, which is thinking about blooming soon. And then I did put in um, several big beauty alliums. This is another perennial allium that's similar to summer beauty. Um, you can see it's obviously done blooming. We just got seed heads there now. Similar to summer beauty, but much taller. So it stands up above the foliage of other plants in a garden much better. So kind of a simpler look for this garden, which, uh, which appeals to me. So that brings us to the circle garden. Uh, I'll say it was not the most successful year in the circle garden. Um, you know, this is where I sort of play with different plant combinations and I always change it up. Um, so we do have some dahlias here. This is Jowy Morella, great dahlia. Over here, this was supposed to be a combination of uh, royal velvet petunias, which you can see one just right down here, and um, a superbina. And I thought they were the same color and I thought it'd be this really interesting play on texture. The su Every petunia I put in the ground this year has not done well. The superbina is doing well, but superbina can only really do so much. And I did not cut it back at all because I was very afraid that it wouldn't grow back in time. So we do have some sort of holes in the middle here. Um, so I won't do that combination again. In this part of the garden, I just have the profusion white zinnias, mostly grown from seed, although half of the seed grown ones uh, ended up being the pink zinnias that I've showed you around. So I had to go to Home Depot and pick up some more. And if I had known Home Depot would have them, I wouldn't have grown them from seed to begin with. And then I also had to redo this section of the bed. This was planted with Nicotiana. It was way too messy for my taste. So I replanted this only three or so weeks ago with some annual salvia, um, Play in the Blues and Unplugged So Blue or something like that. And then in between there, the chartreuse is Jewels of Opar, which has reseeded itself throughout the garden. And I just transplanted some of that in there to get that great blue. And I love that combination. I might actually do that one again in the future. And the dahlia in this corner is um, Zundert Mystery Fox. Over here, I like this combination where it's doing well, but it's not doing well everywhere. Uh, so we've got Pitalorus. Um, this is a lamb's tail. This one is called Joey. That's the pink flower. And then with that, I planted Salvia Argentia. When you're close up, it looks pretty good. When you back up, it looks a little sparse in some spots. And then we get to just the cosmos disaster over here. This is not super full sun. This is definitely a part sun scenario. And they just have flopped. They haven't filled in well. They're not blooming well. Uh, big disappointment, um, big lesson learned on the cosmos this year. So now we can continue with the shade bed along here. This is all mostly familiar to most of you. I did plant these, um, uh, this is a native heuchera here. This is heuchera villanosa autumn bride. So I hope those will really thrive along there. That was a new planting there. And I sort of changed the line of this bed over here too. Let me just take you around this way so you can see the bed line along here now. Because I think I showed you this view when I was talking about this. So you can kind of see how things change um, with the bed line here. And before we get into the new garden, let's just check out the end of the driveway. So um, this is where we removed the boxwood blight boxwoods. I think you can see, I don't need them. The Hacklenchloa macra that's in there is clearly doing all that needs to be done here. Behind that are pagoda dogwoods that are really coming to their own. And even the dwarf Alberta spruce in the back, even though it's been a really tough year, um, are doing really well and looking really good back there. So this area was planted in 2018 and it's filled in really, really well. So here's a quick view of the new garden in general doing really, really well. Um, in the front here, you see this is um, Stacky's Summer Crush, which I've allowed the seed heads to remain on because I think they're quite pretty. Um, and then back here, you see um, the sort of tall plant you see here. Uh, this is Verona Castrum, Culver's Root, Queen of Diamonds. 
if you guys remember the Chelsea Chop video, some of these I chopped. This one in front right here is one of them. The ones in back, I didn't. Um, so you can see the ones that I Chelsea chopped have stayed really oh, quite a bit more compact. Um, and they're blooming, I would say they started blooming a week or two later than the ones in back. I quite like the combination of both the tall and the short on those. As we come down the driveway here, this is a self-seeded bronze fennel, which I cut back by half. I sort of Chelsea chopped this actually. And oh gosh, just look at those blooms. I mean, it's, it's just gorgeous. And it's perfect here along the driveway um, because it's just tough. It looks, looks great. And of course, uh, that's a big pollinator attractor. This is um, Pycnanthemum muticum, which has sort of flopped a little bit. I had um, somebody ask me if I was going to stake that up, and I said no, because this garden isn't about perfect and staking. This garden is about natural and flowing and sort of, to a certain extent, letting, to a certain extent, letting nature sort of take care of itself and grow more naturally. Um, I've, we've talked about all these plants a billion times, but I just want to show you this grass. This is Carex flocka blue zinger. This plant is of some interest because um, some places have stopped selling it because it can be a bit invasive in some places. And I think you can see how much this has grown. This is from a two inch plug last year. I love what it's doing. I love how it's filling in and I love how it sort of weaves its way through this garden here. But I think you know, people are being cautious for a reason with it. This is new this year for me, this um, chartreuse color here. This is Golden Arrow, and I need to tell you the main name of it, uh, which I cannot think of right now, but it'll be on the screen when you're watching this. But you can see it's got these really pink flowers. Now this is a ton of them planted in here, and this plant gets pretty big, so I will have to move these around. I just planted them very thickly this year, so that it would make a big show from the get-go. The grass you see in front of you is millennia transparent and it is exactly that it is as you can see as we look through it here it is transparent which i like in this spot because it shields the driveway a little bit but you can see beyond it still The blue plant right here is um, just a native lobelia that I bought in a native plant sale um, organized by our county last year. And it's it's doing well. Um, theoretically, it likes really wet soil, but I don't know if you can see our creek is completely dry and has been most of the year. So it's not getting that wet of soil this year, but it's hanging in there nonetheless. You can see all the veronicastrum, by the way. These are the tall ones in the back here. As we make our way down the path here, um, just a quick note, here's a, it's kind of finished blooming now, but this is a sanguisorba called um, lilac squirrel with these fuzzy little heads. And uh, oh my gosh, you know, guys, I just love sanguisorba, but this one is so cute. Um, and, this is, and this is how they look when they're done. They sort of turn brown, but they're still sort of fuzzy and, I don't know, interesting. So this garden, of course, is, is only a year old. And so, you know, I'm refining things and changing things as I grow. One of the things that I've noticed is that I feel like there's way too much um, liatris in this garden. That's partly because I grew it from bulbs and it was cheap to fill in this garden. So um, next year I'm going to come up with some more plants to add in here and move some of this liatris out of here. Um, it's still interesting. It's just more of it than I feel is necessary in this garden. And then, of course, I think you see here this gorgeous... Angelica gigas, which um, this is of course a biennial. And I transplanted this one from where I grow it over by the garage. I've showed you guys this plant before. Um, I just think it's the coolest plant. And uh, I think it does really well here. You can see um, a lot of times there's, there's these, these type of wasps. I don't know what they are. I think they're some sort of wasp fight happening there. Anyway, these type of wasps in particular are like this, but all pollinators love this plant. And I think it adds a structure to a garden that few other plants can offer. Um, and by the way, it is not invasive um, and it does look like a lot of other plants. Uh, this is actually medicinal. This is not um, hogweed or pigweed. I think it's hogweed. Um, it's not one of those 
I have had some comments about that before. Um, and it is a reseeder, so there will be seeded plants. I find it very easy to remove what I don't want. And um, the first year plants from seeds next year will not flower, and then the second year plants flower. On both sides of the path that we come to the end here uh, is more Calamintha Montrose White. And I talk about this plant all the time, so I'll just stop. But um, this year I did plant some gentian violet in there, um, which I'm hoping we'll see a, blue, a bloom from. That I'm hoping that we're going to get this great show of the little white flowers with the big, big blue gentian violet in there as well. We've got more Hellenium in here. Um, a Shasta Daisy actually doing really quite well here. Um, and this is, uh, this is not blooming yet. Although look at the, actually it's the seed pods that we're really after here, but look at these beautiful flowers on this. Uh, this is a milkweed that you guys will know as the family jewels plant or the hairy balls plant. And I grow it because I think it's funny and because it's actually really pretty in bouquets. I'll just show you this part. This is kind of shady part of the new garden. Um, this is really part that is not fully developed yet, but I do have a lot of Carex planted in here, Pennsylvanica, as well as um, Rosia. I believe that's how that one's pronounced. Here's the Carex Pennsylvanica sort of underneath this oak tree. Um, and then I also put in this year, I planted, um, here's some toad lilies right here. And I planted quite a bit of um, anemones in here as well. Honoré Jobert, which is the white one. So this is a shady part of the garden that I really look forward to developing more over the next few years um, in this same vein of a lot of Carex, etc. By the way, uh, that's a new garden sculpture. That was a Christmas present from Mr. Much More Patient. So it finally found a home in the garden. And then last but not least, let's pop into the vegetable garden and see what's happening in there. Uh, the little boss clematis that grows over the top is reblooming a little bit. So that's really fun. Those grow in these pots, which I'll show you in a second. So this is obviously looking back at the gate. I just want to show you the pots because they have changed. Now I had that fighting temeraire rose in here. Uh, they both died on me. I think I overloved them. It was operator error. So I bought some albutalon to stick in here. Now this isn't a tropical annual. I can try to bring it in if I want, but I'm really happy with how it looks in here. And then of course I've got the double, double diamond euphorbia down there. But uh, I just think that's really pretty there. And then of course you can see the clematis is growing in these two pots. That overwintered with no problem. And that is looking... That is looking really great up there. Now, a few of the garden beds have just recently been replanted with some fall crops and some fresh things, um, but some things are looking good. We've got some good lettuce here. The kale that I planted in spring is still looking, and by the way, tasting great. And I'm very happy to report that we're actually having a really stellar tomato season so far. They've been very good. They're just starting to come into uh, to ripen right now. And uh, so far we've been pretty lucky with disease, which is kind of shocking considering how humid it's been. But you can see if we look, if we look at this side of the tomatoes, you can see there's a whole bunch of, in fact, several that look like they need picking in there. Uh, the only problem here is that I used a marker that basically wore off. So I don't know what tomato is what out here, but I have a lot of tomato picking to do out here. Now you guys have seen the, um, we've done a video on this. This is, I think, going to be the last lotus flower. Oh, I do see a new bud coming in, so we might have another. This one opened up the other day. It's looking a little tired. These are the lotus pods from previous flowers developing. Um, I'm not going to get into much into that because we did a video on it, but it sure is still looking great. The sweet potato, sweet, the sweet pea vines uh, had a great year, but they are coming to the end of their run here. These are probably the last flowers. I'll have to cut these two back pretty dramatically. And over here, I think this one really just needs to go. It looks pretty terrible. And I've already removed the one from this other one. Now, these are the cutting flower beds. There's mostly zinnias in there now. Um, this is a china aster, which is the first time that I've grown this flower. 
Um, I will grow those again. That was really fun. Um, again, um, mostly zinnias here, some snapdragons. Just replanted this bed. The squash bed is looking good. Lots of, lots of great butternut squashes in there, honey nut squashes, all of those. Uh, this bed, we've got turmeric is the big leaf that you see right here. And next to it over here is ginger growing. It's the first time I'm growing those in raised beds. And the bean harvest has been great. Those are the beans. I'm still harvesting beans and they are delicious. And uh, over here is the herb bed. The cucumbers obviously are um, going nuts over there. I'm actually seeing several that I need to pick again. I, I'm having a hard time keeping up with picking the cucumbers. And this is all the basil that we planted. The minette basil growing along the edges in my sort of foxglove type. Oh, cripes. Check out this slug right on my basil. Ugh, gross. Uh, it's been a rough year for basil. Japanese beetles. Um, I think actually um, some of these are starting to succumb to um, uh, the mildew that they get. Um, so it's been a rough year for basil, um, but at least I've got the minette and it's looking great. Um, and I still like this bed. I still think it looks really pretty full. Um, here's some, there are some cucumbers that need some picking in there. I did grow a few dahlias from seed this year for the first time. And I planted those in the veggie garden and we're getting our first blooms. This is my very first bloom on a dahlia I've grown from seed. So kind of interesting and uh, it's going to be fun. I'm enjoying um, watching these to see sort of what develops and if any real gems uh, come out of them. Okay, so that's just a little tour of the garden. I, I didn't want to, even though I didn't have somebody to um, walk around and film, I didn't want to miss the chance to show you guys the garden when it's really looking pretty much in shape with a few things here and there that need to be um, just tidied up. But for the most part, it's looking about as good as it's going to look. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, you got questions about something that you saw, um, leave a timestamp and let me know what time you saw it. I'm happy to identify anything I can if I didn't already call it out in the video. And I'm happy to answer your questions as long as I'm able to. And I hope you guys are having a great day in your garden. It's sort of the glory days of summer. Um, I'm enjoying it. I'm certainly enjoying the great harvest from the garden and the flowers from the garden. And uh, in a week or so, I'll be enjoying sort of taking a slower pace in the garden too. And I hope you are too. All right, we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.